What's going on, everybody? This is your host, Arctic Ghost, and welcome back to another edition of the Arctic Pauper Show. This time around, we are bringing in a green-red token deck. Uh, I saw someone 5-0 with this in a league, and I decided to uh, retool the deck and put in my own spin to it. I apologize for the person if they, if, uh, they would like to come forth if they find my videos or my article. I have no problem giving them a shout out. All they need to do is let me know it was them. So, uh, this deck is basically just play as many tokens out as possible, whether it be with Sprout Swarm, Scatter Seed, a mix of Scatter Seeds, Nest Invaders, and what have you. And then your big win conditions are Dino Charge, or you can literally poke them to death with Raid Bombardment, which is quite fun. <clears throat> uh, the original deck list did not have Raid Bombardment. I added that myself because I I wanted another way to really just, you know, be able to just go all in. Um, what this allows me to do is once I have, you know, Spider Silk Armor down and I have like, I don't know, six or seven guys out and I'm making, you know, four or five guys a turn with Sprout Swarm, I can then just keep sending in, you know, four or five guys and I can keep shipping away at my opponent's life total with Raven Barman. I only have three... It might be better to have four uh, so that I have better luck of drawing two, but I don't really, I don't really think I, I need that. It also is kind of like playing down on charge. Um, kind of like playing down on charge three, uh, four through six. And the reason why I don't play four down on charge is because this is a constant threat that stays in play. And you can literally, like I said, just keep chipping away and throwing guys at your opponent. Uh, so, it also is, is just kind of fun to me, I guess. So, that's really what it is. It also is basically like, if you're up against a counter deck, or a, a control deck with counter spells, this gives you another way to chip down your opponent quicker. As where, like, uh, you know, if, you, if you're waiting to draw down a charge to win the game, and they have a counter spell game is going to take longer either way let's break the deck down piece by piece and uh, go through it so far the one drops you have nettle sentinels because they're the most aggressive one drop that green can have pretty much uh they're also really really good with sprout swarm because every time you convoke with it sprout swarm will make this untapped so you only need four other mana to use it uh then you have young wolf young wolf's just a good sticky creature uh you need two removal spells to deal with it and it's just it's just really good for the two drops, not surprising, you have the two best token generators in the format, in my opinion. You have Nest Invader and Mogro Marshall. Mogro Marshall, when it dies, you still get a 1-1 token, so you don't have to pay the Echo. And Nest Invader brings along a 0-1 Call as Eldrazi Spawn token that also can't really attack well. Uh, with Raid Bombardment, still deals 1 damage. With Might of the Masses, it could still get in. With Dino Charge, still another creature. And it also can sacrifice itself to help you cast stuff. So that works. Uh, next up is Thermal Alchemist. Thermal Alchemist is great because not only does it work so well with Convoke spells, but also it just chips away at your opponent as well. I have literally killed opponents with Thermal Alchemist just chipping away and Sprout Swarm. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> it really is. It's a lot of fun. Uh, so, take that for what you will. I think Thermal Alchemist is actually one of the best creatures to enter Pauper in years. I think this is just a great creature. It does die to Lightning Bolt, that's true, but it blocks basically every big threat that you see in Pauper on the ground. Blocks uh, all the elf creatures, blocks a lot of stompy creatures, it blocks a lot of white weenies creatures, it blocks all the goblin creatures. It's, it's just really good, and it chips away at your opponent and allows you to take advantage of spells, so it's pretty good in my opinion, at least. Uh, going on to the one drop removal, you only have one. You have Flame Slash. Yes, this deck could run Lightning Bolt, but the thing about Flame Slash is that it kills things in Affinity, or it might kill something that just happens to have a four butt, like Demonic Wall, so I chose to play it. I'm very, very open to the idea that Lightning Bolt is better, don't get me wrong, but I want to use Flame Slash for now because it's been doing well for me. Uh, then you have Dino Charge, of course, which is your big win condition because of Overload, so there's that. Uh, then you have Mind of the Masses, which is another, like, big kind of win condition. It's... I'm not a huge fan of it. It might be better to be four uh, Raid Bombardment and four Dino Charge, but I'm not really sure. It might even honestly be better to be, like, 
Lanaros, but I I don't know. I, I want to continue testing it, so what is that? Anyway. Uh, getting on to the rest of the deck, you have Sprout Swarm, which is a really big win condition, of course. It, it's just your main way to create um, tokens. You play four of them because you always want to draw one as early as possible so you can get that engine going. You have Sky of the Seas because it's a quick, cheap way to get three tokens onto the, the battlefield, and it's uh, an instant. And then you have Spire Silk Armor to help against the Electricery or to help against you know blocking flying creatures, but mostly it's the Electricery. Take that for what you will. And then you have Raven Barman, which I kind of explained before. As far as the mana base goes, you have two Gruel Turf, um, just as extra dual lands. You don't want too many dual lands in this deck to come to play untapped, and you do kind of want lands uh, in play. Um, and so I only play two Gruel Turf, and I think the gaining one life back from Rugged Highlands is better. Then you have Colony Garden because it also creates a token, and then you have just basics. That's basically what it is. The reason why there's more mountains than forest. Because this is basically a forest. Not really, but it taps for green, so you, you get the point. Wow, that is a beautiful picture, actually. Anyway, so that is the main deck. Um, it's kind of stocked to what you would think a red-green token deck would be. Uh, not really much else. I've looked for a lot of things that create tokens. I think this might be just the best one. One other card that I was looking at was Hissing Iguanar, which was the really old school way of winning in goblins before, um, I think like Goblin Bushwhacker and maybe some other things got printed. I don't quite remember. Uh, it was so long ago when I was looking at Pauper then. But, uh, you know, when I came back to Pauper, I noticed that Goblin Bushwhacker and all these things were the main win conditions. So, Hissing Iguanar kind of fell to the backside. Uh, Hissing Iguana is pretty good. I can just find it here. So it's a three mana. It's a three mana three one. It's not great, but it says whenever another creature dies, you may have Hissing Iguana deal one damage to target player. Now, why might not? They might be saying Arctic, but that's not very good because you're you're not actually have creatures dying. You have tokens. Well, the ruling is when tokens die, they actually do hit the graveyard. It's just once they hit the graveyard, it's poof. They go gone forever. So, tokens actually do hit the graveyard and the game checks. So, actually, you do lose one damage. Uh, so, Hissing Iguanar alongside Raid Bombardment might be really good because you can just send creatures in and then once they die, you also Hissing Iguanar. I'm not quite sure if that is better than, like, say, Main Deck Spire Spell Karma right now. It might be better than just playing Flame Slash. Uh, not exactly sure, but it's definitely something to investigate in the future. On to the sideboard, you have three Electricery for one toughness purposes just wrathing the board of course for those of you who don't know maybe a wrath effect is look up the create look up the card wrath of god it says it's uh, just basically a mass removal card is what i'm talking about and, or aoe if you've played hearthstone or um uh world of warcraft for those of you who don't maybe know what aoe stands for it stands for area of effect i believe so pyroblast to help you uh send your big spells through usually you want to Use it to get your Dino Charge through. Protect your Sprout Swarm are really the two things that you want. Essence Warden against uh, Aggro Matchups where you want to gain life. Uh, really good Naturalize effect. And then Moments Peace to kind of just play the control route against the Aggro Decks. See, sometimes when you're up against like Slivers and things like that, you're maybe one or two turns off from being able to build up enough of a board to keep sustaining and, and staying alive and keep... Uh, building up a more of a board so that you can win the game and moments peace helps with that so that's the main deck we're gonna run it through a couple test matches i will tell you this before i go in electricery and nausea effects are everywhere this deck also does not have the best delver matchup so you might be thinking well then why the hell are you bringing us this deck well i'm bringing you this deck because in Pauper, really anything can win. Now think about how you win in Magic. You need to be able to play the game well, and you need to get a little bit of lucky. This deck is a good deck. Don't get me wrong. I think it's a good deck. No deck can 5-0 a league just based on luck. It actually has to be a pretty good deck, too. I don't know if this deck is good enough to win a lot in leagues. You might be able to spike a 5-0, or you might go 3-2 a couple times, but I gotta be realistic. I don't think that you'll be able to win a lot. So if you're just looking to play and have fun, this deck might be for you. But 
let's play a couple test matches let's see how the deck actually runs let's see what the deck does and then i'll make my final verdict and uh yeah thanks for watching so much and i'll be right back